I just want to speak for uh, a few minutes. As you can see, a time is coming where we'll uh, wish each other the blessing of the Lord. But, uh, I want to speak to this subject of light in the darkness. I, I suppose many sermons this evening or over this uh, day would have been spoken on the light coming into the darkness. And that's really the message that we need to hear, isn't it? Because we live in a dark world. We live in a quite evil world at this moment. We live in a, a war-torn world where many a nation knows the conflict of death. But that is very similar to what it would have been like all those years ago, 2000 or so, when Christ came into the world. If you know your history, you'll know that the Romans were on the rampage across um, many parts of the world. Death would have been um, all around everybody. And uh, this night would have been full of anticipation, particularly when we hear the words that the angels came and told the shepherds when they spoke of the message of hope coming into the world, the profound truth that Jesus, the light of the world, would be piercing through the darkness. And one commentator said this, as his hands and feet were pierced by nails of man, so this gift of God, his own Son, pierced the darkness of hearts with light the world had never seen. Incredible when we think of what he did for us and what we did to him. But the word became incarnate. And we see that in John 1, these 14 verses which speak a profound truth are the message of incarnation that is revealed. The passage begins, within the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And that introduction establish, establishes Jesus, the Word, as eternal, existing with God from the beginning. There is no other, no other can say such as that. The scripture then tells us, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the incarnation. God becoming human in Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, it signifies a pivotal moment in history where, as we reflected on a couple of weeks ago, the divine and human intersected. It came together in a most powerful of ways. Through Jesus, the unseen and infinite God, that some thought was not touchable, became visible and approachable. Many commentators say Jesus bridged the gap between humanity and divine. And what did he do when he did that? Well, he overcame the darkness with light, the light of the glory of God. See, Jesus' birth signifies more than just a historical statement, and that's perhaps how you approach it. You say, oh, well, he was a good man, and, and people spoke about him well, and he, he did good things, and, and he was, yes, he was definitely there, 
He was definitely historic. But in a world often shrouded with despair and hopelessness, Christ's arrival was more than just historic. It was a beacon of light, guiding us, transforming us, changing us. And through that, we could see the world and all that God had done. You see, before we recognize that truth, that, that, that move from history to, to actual being, Him, God, being with us. Until we move to that place, we're still in darkness. We're still in the struggles and the pains and the shadows. But once we accept Jesus, once we have faith in Him, and once we trust in Him with our lives, our hearts are illuminated and transformed. His light brings hope where there's despair, peace where there's turmoil, and joy where there was sorrow. In his sermon titled Triumphant Light, John Piper delves into John 1 and verse 1 to 5, and he particularly focuses on this invincible light. It is invincible because nothing can put it out. He emphasizes that the light representing Jesus Christ cannot be overcome by darkness. Nothing, nothing can put this light out. And that theme explores three key points that, that John Piper highlights. The light as the life of the Son of God, the life of the Creator of all things, and the unity of this light and life with God. Ultimately, it's summed up that He reconciles us to all that He is all that God is. And I ask you tonight, do you know that reconciliation? Are you like the world that surrounds us? Are you in turmoil? Or are you in darkness? Are you in shadows? Are you grasping at anything that you hope will give you a future? We've hit 12 o'clock. So take a moment to wish everybody the blessing of God and a Merry Christmas, whatever you want to call it. Just uh, take a moment to say to each other, That's all you're getting in a minute. You've got all tomorrow to wish everybody in. If you don't mind, I'll continue. I'll just finish off with one last point to make. And it really is this point of finding the light in our darkness. It's a key and it's a pivotal point because it's, it's necessary for each and every one of us. It's necessary for you tonight. You might not think that. You might be watching online or you might be sitting here tonight and you might think, I don't, I've just come along. I don't really need to hear this message, but can I tell you, you do. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, at this moment in time, we need to know 
that the light of Christ cannot be extinguished by anybody, by anything. It is always and always has been there. It, it will for eternity. And there's nothing else. There's nothing else that can, can be given such a title. As we reflect on this holy night, I want us really to go away from here with comfort and guidance in the light of Christ. And that gives us in our moments of doubt and fear and uncertainty his light will always remain. It will always be there for us to turn to. The light of Christ is deeper than anything we can ever see, imagine, or experience. Nothing else can touch this light. Now, how do we find that light? Well, we find Christ. And we find it by reaching out and trusting Him, recognizing that He is a gift from God, that nothing we do, nothing we are, nothing we can give will make any difference. It is a gift, the gift of grace. We're going to receive gifts tomorrow, I'm sure. We're going to receive love from one another. Probably we'll receive a lot of food as well. Maybe some chocolates, maybe some pudding. But we'll never receive anything like the gift of Christ in our lives and in our hearts. It's, it's something we can't express with words. It's something we cannot compare to anything else. God gave his son so that you and I would know him forever. Not just till the batteries run out. Not just till the fad fades. Not just for Christmas. God gave his son for eternity. And we must recognize through that gift and reflect on Christ's birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. It all comes together to, to bring us into a light that is divine and can squash, flatten, overcome the spiritual darkness that we've all lived in before. And we all have, and we all possibly might still. Christ's life demonstrates how to live in the light. His teaching of love, his compassion to all, and his truth that brings us into knowledge, the knowledge of salvation. And through Christ's death and resurrection, Christ conquered sin and death and the ultimate darkness, offering us eternal life. And he restored our relationship with God. And as Christ ascended to the right hand of God, he didn't leave us alone. He doesn't leave you alone tonight, wandering, stammering, thumbling in the dark. You know, when we were 
this afternoon sitting, contemplating this evening, and um, thankfully we'd had our dinner, the lights went out. And we sat there for a while, just quiet. Newmarket had a power cut. And I thought to myself, what do we do without electricity? What do we do without light? What do we do without Christ? When Christ left this earth, he didn't leave us by ourselves. He sent his Holy Spirit, ensuring that his light continues to guide us and comfort us in the darkest of times. So as we step into Christmas Day today, let the light of Jesus that guides and illuminates our paths let it, let it put out the darkness that surrounds us. Let all of the things that we, we often think, oh, I'll never sort that out. Why not give them to the Lord of light? Why not give them to the God who overcame the darkness? Why not trust in him again? Because he is Emmanuel, God with, God with us. Amen. Let's pray and we're going to watch our first, our first, no, our last, we're going to watch our last um, music video and, uh, and then we're going to call it a night. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, your word that became flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has come into our lives on this day all those years ago as a babe, as a human, but was divine in all his aspects. Lord, we thank you we thank you that you sent your son so that we might know life and know it in the fullness, know it in the spirit and know its guiding hand upon our lives. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he came as a servant and that he lived a life without sin as an example and he died a death that we should have died but were saved from because of your perfect mercy. Lord, we bless you for these things and we do in our heart of hearts lift your name on high and give you all the glory and the honor. And Lord, we pray for many a soul tonight. We pray for our family members, for our friends and colleagues, for those around our community. Lord, we pray for them that they might too see your light, the Lord Jesus, and trust in him to take their hearts out of the darkness that we all experienced but have been allowed, paid for, sacrificed so that we can know your peace and your joy. Lord, bless our time together. We give thanks for this opportunity to lift our voices and praise and prayer and worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our last, uh, our last item is called Searching for a Child.
And it really sums up what we need to do to search for the child, the Lord Jesus. And God promises us that we will find him and he will find us. Watch this last video.
We'll stand for the benediction and close our service. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.